obvious motive to kill. I mean, driven by hate, driven by wanting to kill. The horrible winds of fate. It's the best explanation I have for you for how he saw those officers on the way to where he, we believe he was going. It's North Dakota Attorney General Drew Wrigley describing the events of last July 14th. Wrigley was the face and the voice of those news conferences where we learned the details of everything that happened that day. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie caught up with him this week to see what he thinks about the shooting now one year later. This area along 25th Street South in Fargo is all too familiar to North Dakota Attorney General Drew Wrigley. Officer Willene gave his life here and two others, uh, Officer Dotus and Officer Haas, um, took the line of fire and nearly paid that ultimate price too. Wrigley led the BCI's investigation into the deadly shooting and remembers the details vividly. The heroics of uh, Officer Zach Robinson are well documented. This is sanctified ground out here and it, it always will be. Of all the images Wrigley has combed through, there's one he thinks of often. I remember Zach Robinson coming up this embankment and, and at some point he's calling out to say, send, <laughs> send everybody. Three officers down. Send everybody. The men and women of the Fargo Police Department came moments later from every direction. Some had guns, others had first aid kits. None of them are looking around. None of them are wondering, is there another, is there a sniper on the roof? Are there others coming? Are there other people? Are there, are there other assailants? They're all looking over here. They've got officers and a civilian down. Uh, they've got people's lives to literally save. The BCI was there in minutes, and the evidence uncovered after the shooting still haunts investigators who worked the case. The concern was very real all around is what's coming next? Do we have, are we safe leaving our homes? And our earliest indication was that there were no other immediate imminent attacks, and that bore out over the course of the investigation. But beside the point, because in the initial minutes, hours, and days, you don't know those answers. Officers stood as the last line of defense and they stood firm, Officer Jake Walleen, until his last breath. That response that day was by people who were really well trained, who were well selected for their jobs, uh, who had the right instincts, and then they had the ingredient that you don't know until it's tested, courage. We ask Wrigley what he thinks can be learned from everything that happened last year. He says he's thought about that a lot, but there's not much anyone could have done differently or better. Many people have asked if there was a way to prevent all of this. We do know the shooter, Mohammed Barakat, had run-ins with police before, including shooting the explosive Tannerite at a gun range and having a stockpile of guns at his apartment. However, police said there was nothing they could do because none of this was illegal. And the aftermath of the shooting, Wrigley himself raised concerns about binary triggers used to make that semi-automatic weapon fire almost as quickly as a fully automatic weapon. They fire once you pull the trigger and once the trigger is released. Here's a reminder of what it sounded like that day, followed by Wrigley's remarks. It's a worthless piece of equipment. It's a valueless piece of equipment, but it was lawful and it was attached to the weapon lawfully and then used for the only purpose I, with my limited imagination, can even imagine to create the functional equivalent of automatic fire. Minnesota passed a ban on binary triggers during your 2024 legislative session that takes effect January 1st of next year. The devices are still legal in North Dakota.